I want to teach, but we will live here place. Can I hear an amen? I'm talking to you on what I've titled, When God Does Not Make Sense. Let me share a short testimony with you before I go into today's message. I've been praying about some things personally for some time. Nobody knows about it. I've been talking to God. And my mom is about to be 70 years old. Yesterday, I had a family meeting. I went to the house and we decided to plan something to make her happy. And I've never entered her bedroom for the past five, six years. I go there, give her the tithe, kneel down, she prays for me. Yesterday, she didn't pray for me. But when I entered her bedroom, all of a sudden, she said, yes, I have something for you. All the past six years, she's been piling up birthday presents that she forgot. No, she's 70. She forgot to give to me. So I took these things. Pastor David was there with me. I just went to dump them into the car. And when I went home, I was praying. The Holy Ghost had opened them up. And when I opened them up, there were three things in them. Now, if a prophet gives you a wallet, you know what he gave you? Money. It's only a fool that thinks that a prophet needs to give you money. One of the things in it that was only singular was money. I say money. I say money. was wallet. Very big wallet. I've never used a wallet maybe for about 20 years. She gave me a wallet. I don't know why this woman will buy me a wallet. And as soon as I got a wallet, I sensed prophetically that this woman has spoken to me. The next thing I had was, I thought it was four o'clock later, I realized, she gave me five different sets of watch. Five different kinds, different types. Now to you, it is watch. But to me, it's seasons, times, and years. The last one, I don't tell you. No, 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 no. It's too serious. And the last one, when I was, I was looking at it, I said, Racy, this one will fit you. <laughs> Mommy, this one will fit you. But that is a funny thing. Now, I'm still talking to you on what I've titled when God does not make sense. Because to you, if you meet a woman of God and she's giving you something, you don't need a wallet. You need money. When the woman went to the prophet and said, my husband died poor. He used our children as collateral. The prophet said, what do you have in your house? And he said, oil. Only a little. Then the prophet said, go and get empty vessels. Why? So that in the empty vessels, the more you pour the oil into the empty vessel, the more you will be able to feed your family. Now, most often, when God is speaking to us and directing us, we don't understand the language that God is speaking. Because God doesn't speak Chi or English or doesn't speak Latin. That's why when I get people who are prophesying and they speak in James, I wonder if they think I'm a joker. Thou sayest the Lord. Please. is God doesn't speak King James. But you see, we add the King James for people to know that really, really, this is God. But whether you speak it in a way or three, I was praying for somebody. The person is here. <laughs> and whilst I was praying for the person, a spirit started speaking through her. I didn't understand the language because it's your hometown language. This spirit was very funny. So I took my video and recorded everything. And then, after the section, I woke this lady up and said, what does this thing mean? 
And she explained the thing for me. And guess what? As soon as she finished explaining, somebody from the family called. And she, she asked her, why are you calling me? The person doesn't even know why. How are you? And the thing I was praying on her for was the reason why the person was asking questions. So I was telling this person that if you are not in the spirit, you will think that it is an ordinary missing. This is another, not an ordinary missing. This is a message. Now the interesting thing about God is that when God is speaking, you might never understand or hear him unless you get an interpreter. That is why in the book of Acts, chapter number 8, you will see a man by name, the Ethiopian Enoch. And this Ethiopian Enoch was reading the book of Isaiah. And as was reading, the Holy Ghost said to um, Philip, get up and let me carry you to join the chariot. So he joined the chariot of this Ethiopian Enoch who had the potential of carrying Christianity to Africa. People lie to us and say that it is the white man who brought Christianity to Africa. It's a lie. Before the white man ever even saw or Columbus or Christopher, then, 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 step in Africa, Christianity was already in Africa. And a guy was reading Isaiah without understanding it. Then the Philip asked him, do you understand what you read? And I like the answer the man gave. How can I understand? I said somebody interprets. He's reading English, Hebrew, Spanish. Or oh, what is your language? Spanish, Portuguese. He's reading it. But he doesn't understand. Then the prophet began to say, Let me explain this thing for you. This is talking about the Messiah, the Son of God. Now, when the man gained understanding, nobody told him. What next to do? Once they were going, he asked the Philip, what stops me from getting baptized? There is water. A man who gains understanding knows what to do next. He doesn't need a priest again. He told, he told the Philip that I see water. The priest didn't have to tell him that, can I baptize you? He himself said, what prevents me from being water baptized? Since there is water. How did he know that he needs to be baptized? What he was reading was never speaking. So in John chapter 12, we read that from the 27th verse I quoted. I read it. You read and you see that Jesus said what? My soul is what? My soul is deeply troubled. Can I have the NLT? Okay. My soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray? Father, save me from this hour. But this is the very reason I came. So sometimes you can be praying against your own purpose because you lack understanding. You can be running away from your own destiny helpers thinking your destiny helpers are even your enemies. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Jesus who was praying against the very reason why he came to the earth. Because you have been taught, especially if you read the tree Bible, please, the tree Bible, there's a lot of inconsistency in the tree Bible. Whenever you are reading the tree Bible, please try and read the English version first. Like the tree Bible, if you go to the English Bible, it says that the blessings of the Lord makes a man rich and added no sorrow. If you go to the tree Bible, it says that if God bless you, he doesn't add trouble. So if you are going through trouble, then God is not blessing you. Which is a lie. So all of us grew up believing that if there is trouble, then God is against you. Actually, we serve a God who takes you through trouble. He said, you will go through the waters and I will be with you. He didn't say that when you see the water, you will jump it. So from childhood, a lot of us have been deceived. So no what we have moved against the will of our own life, our own destiny, and our own purpose. Because you don't even understand it. 
So Jesus was praying, said that, that this thing should go away from him. But he said, oh, but for this reason I came. Now, as soon as he said, for this reason I came, heaven responded. When you discover your purpose, heaven will speak to you. You didn't hear me. The people assigned to you will never become pleasurable until you learn to discover who they are to your life. So verse 26, 28, sorry. Say, Father, bring glory to your name. Wait a minute. In other words, he's saying that I don't care what I go through as long as he gives you glory. And a lot of us, I always, I always sing this song. For your glory, I will do anything. Please, if you don't want to go through things, stop it. Because sometimes the more you sing through this song, the more you go through trouble. You were like, didn't God hear me? He said, that is the road. For your glory. As soon as he prays that God, for this reason I came. Bring your glory. The voice spoke from heaven saying, a voice spoke from heaven saying, I have already brought glory to my name, but I will do so again. In other words, Jesus, whatever you are going through is for my glory. I'm glorified in it. Wait a minute. Can a suffering man make God glorified? Yes. In some time, God will let all your enemies surround you despise you, reject you and say you can't be. So that when he lifts you up, that unbeliever will say, there is a true God. Like years ago, I prayed for a, a, a lady, she's not a woman, who did not have a womb. And her womb was removed by a doctor because she had an accident and they also put a, a metal in the leg. And I prayed for her and her knee became straight. For the first time she could bend. Put that aside. Then I told her that I see that you can give birth. The lady laughed at me. We all laughed at me. Years ago, I was driving through Malam. This lady, I stopped church. I saw her with her baby. Now, before then, what happened was that after I prayed for her, she had faith. She went to the hospital and she went to the particular hospital, it used to be at that hospital. I don't know whether it's still there. Pastor David can remind me. It used to be at that place. Used to, it's, it's a laboratory around North Kanesha, that area. And the doctor who did the removal was the one who did the test and said, No, I removed this. Why is it that there is a womb inside? Well, they brought me a report. Even though I am a man of God myself, I didn't believe it. Till I saw this lady carrying a baby. And I said, Whose baby is that? I said, Pastor, my baby. I said, wait a minute. So, so it is true. Now, the truth about God is that even me who prophesied it, I was shocked. I was so amazed. Why should I be amazed? Because God does things and when he wants to take the glory, he makes sure that everybody around you does not even believe it's possible. I know you can't clap. So Jesus said, bring down, show me now your glory. He said, I'm already glorified. You shall still yet be glorified. Then what happened? The voice disappeared. Then Jesus went to the crowd. Let's read this, please. When the crowd, read. When the crowd heard the voice, some thought it was what? What others declared an angel had spoken to him. Then Jesus told them, the voice was for your benefit, not mine. Wait a minute. So this voice that came, it was for your benefit. You, that is for your benefit. You hear thunder. Ah, you, you didn't get it. No. It, the voice, the, Jesus understood the voice clearly. But the people who were supposed to benefit from their voice said, uh, they heard thunder. I went to my mom's room yesterday. I told her I've not been there before. And I touched her mattress. And I said, Mommy, can I change your mattress? She looked at me and frowned and said, don't touch my altar. I understood. And my brother was like, I said, hey, he's saying something. I understand very well. A woman who had slept on, on, on a mattress for about 15 years. Them, to you, the mattress might be spoke. 
she knows the encounter she had with God on that mattress. You, you, would, you would not. I remember there was a time I was going to get a visitor and I told my wife that this visitor can't sleep in my prayer room. So, but you make a I said, this visitor can't sleep in my prayer room. I said, I said, that, that, that mattress, is, to you, it is mattress. But to us who are very spiritual, it is no mattress. It's a portal. Okay, let me use some of you are wearing spectacles here. Some people are wearing spectacles for fun. Some are wearing it for ice. <laughs> Yours is for fun. It's for ice. Some people here is for fun. God has given them good eyes, but they just want to put on some so that people think that their eyes are not good. I don't even know what I'm talking about. So it is not everything that is explainable in the same way. People have attachment on their hair because they don't have hair. Some do have hair. They have kinked it inside and they have attached some on it. If you have, if the hair is not functioning the same thing. Are you understanding me here? If I say kinked it, I'm sure you understand it. So I read this. I, I've thought on this thing several times. But I read it and I'm like, God, why is it that the voice, the people that will benefit from the voice, they said they had thunder? Can you imagine if God says, take three steps, you will be a millionaire? And I ask you, what did you hear? I hear boom, 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 boom. So why are you crying away? They want to kill me. Ah, it is three steps to making money. Pastor, you didn't hear well. I heard thunder and lightning. But God said, no, the Lord said, sit here, do three days waiting. Your heavens will open. He said, that's what you heard. Me too, I know what I heard. Take your own, I take my own. After years, you realize that you are suffering. Because you could not interpret the voice. Because voices are determined by personalities. I will explain <laughs> one of my sons came to me and said oh I have this money and I want to do business so advise me I said I will advise you very well but let me call one of my sons I have raised to have a meeting with you to help you so I called this my son and this, when I was talking to him not he was not too far he was, he was, he was opposite the church he packed his car. And I said, I have this son who has 5,000 cities. He wants to do business. I said, he's too small. I have a son. He was telling me he has a son who had 300 Ghana cities. And he taught him an, a business to do. I'm sure you will know that son of his. He taught him a business to do. And when he taught him the business to do, today he shifts two containers every month. I said, how much did he start with? 300. You see, there is something this my son understands that me I don't understand. How can you start business with 300 Ghana cities and be shipping two containers? You are crazy. It doesn't make economic sense to me, but it makes economic sense to him because there's a level of understanding he has gained that me, I don't have it. And sometimes the problem with all of us is that what benefits you most, you don't even know how it benefits you, so you fight it. Let me give you a very good example. How many of you know that exercise is good? How many of you know it's good? Including me. I have treadmill three times in my house. I never use it. I know it is good. I even told one of my sons to go jogging in the morning. As if me, I don't know that jogging in the morning is good for me. I'm being very frank with you that we all know but sometimes our natural system has a way of rejecting what can benefit us and sometimes we only wake up when we are down we have no way, there is no opportunity again, we have become useless then we say now let me try this so why is it that God sounds nonsense. God sounds nonsense because God does not speak to your senses.
Because God does not speak to your senses, when you try to understand God from your sense, what are some of the senses? Sight, hearing, tasting, feeling, smelling. God doesn't speak to your senses. And if you try to understand God from your sense level, you are failed in advance. It's that comparing CD to the dollar. There's no way it can catch up. When we make the one is to one, where are we? I mean, until we change how we see our CD, forget all policies. Because it's, there's a, I told you before, there's a natural principle of life. Anything you value, appreciate. Anything you don't value, depreciate. And as long as you don't value our city, it will, hey, no, no government can change it until they change the first thing of our mind, valuing what we have. That's all. That's all. And that one cannot be quantified with money. But that is the basic thing. You don't like African wear. So you wear European wear. You don't like African rice. You like abrochile rice. And all our things that have a way, our tastes have changed. Is it true or false? Oh, it's not true. So, so it is not the... We can have policies, but those policies will never work until something has worked internally within us. So, Mars Moreau composed a song. I can't sing the song, so I'll speak the words. He said, if you want a brand new world, you need a brand new people. If you want a brand new people, you need a brand new life. If you need a brand new life, you must come to Jesus. Am I teaching here? Now, the vessel you are will determine how you interpret God. So, Zechariah chapter 4, 11 to 12. Golden oil doesn't come through plastic pipes. Anybody who is marking gold has an internal mechanism that can mark gold. You see, when we read Zechariah chapter 4, we've been using Zechariah chapter 4 throughout, I think since July, we've been reading where it, the Bible said, Who are thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, it shall become a plain that the, the hands of Zerubbabel has started. He will finish it. It is true. We shout of grace, grace. But most of you read on to the next verse. As you go there, we say, oh, He asked him, How can these things be said? Then I saw two olive trees. They asked him, What are these two olives for? Then he said, then the angel answered, you see olive tree, but it's not an ordinary olive tree. Then I asked, okay, let's read. Then I asked the angel, what are these two olive trees on earth? In the east side of the lampstand, what was the answer? And what are the two olive branches that was, and what are the two olive branches that were? Pour out what? Golden or you true what? Oh, didn't hear. Golden or you true what? Hey, they didn't hear you. Read, go. Golden or you true what? Poverty mind. Cannot have prosperity. If poverty man has riches passing through, by the time the water comes, it is poverty. You don't understand it. Should I explain again? If your mind is poverty inclined, if they put one million dollars in you, by the time it comes out, it has turned to a sand. You don't understand. If you take dirty water and you pass it to a filtered system of water, by the time it appears out, it becomes clean water. True or what? Yeah. What changes this? Um, the water was an internal mechanism that filtered the dirt out of it. So what I'm trying to say is that if you want to see a certain kind of result, you must have a certain kind of life. You can't be an ordinary person and expect to have an extraordinary life. My dear, I'm not speaking well. Is it true? It's not true. So, the golden oil was only poured out what? through golden what? Tubes or golden vessels. 
If you go to a place like Teshi, I've not been there, but I've heard it, read it, that they use the seawater and they've done some filtering system and by the time the water comes through the taps, it's no more seawater. It's normal water to drink. Wow. So you are in your house drinking normal water. The water, Ghana water, supplies us from the wager dam. If you go and drink that one, it's diamond. But when they pass, they put some chemicals, they put some things through it, chlorine, chloride, whatever, through it, so that by the time it comes to your house, it is drinkable. And what God does to you is that this life at this level is not good. But because God wants to take you to somewhere, he puts certain ingredients in your life. And those ingredients are not palatable. They are not something you might like, but they are what will produce the desired result that you want. Is it true? It's not true. Yeah. I know you don't. You know you tell it's not true. Esther, you want to be a queen, right? You have to bath six men with oil of men. Six men with oil of frank incense. Ah. You think I don't have soap? You have soap. We know. But the soap in your house is not like the soap in the palace. You see, your attitude at home cannot take you to the palace. If you want to be in a palace, you must have a palace attitude. Hey, God, I repeat, God, I tell you, your words say, kings shall feed me and their, their princess shall come to me. They shall eat at my dining table. Do you know how to prepare meat, meal for kings? As soon as the Lord told you that kings will eat at your table, it means that go and learn cuisine. And how to prepare food for kings. Kings don't eat like poor people. I repeat it. Poor people is one big banku. One big fish. Go. Kings. Small banku. Small meat. Small fish. Some plantain. Everything is small, 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 small. You, the, when you meet the small, 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 you don't like. If it's king, give five. Is it true? It's not true. I, I don't know if you have seen how rich people and kings they eat. They, if you go to the dining table, you are like, don't they want to eat? Every, you see a lot of assorted dishes. And small, small, small. And suddenly when you go and you, t- you take some of the rice and you take four ladles, people look at you and say, are you okay? You go for the rice. Four ladles. You see everybody goes for one. Because you, when you went for four ladles, you go to the salad, you jump. You got the plant, you jump. Then you go stew, a lot of stew. Then you take your fish, go and sit down. Everybody there sees that very soon you will die of Kabul. <laughs> no, but look, you have not told anybody who you are, but the people at the table, they know that this guy, very soon he will die. I will buy watch How much? Ten cities. How my salad? I'm not a goat. <laughs> Willie, give me five. Please, Pastor Tony is asking you a question. Ask me. Willie, what does he give? I don't know. <laughs> what some? There is nothing from Willie. Willie doesn't give anything to your body. What flavor? It's fat. <laughs> no, I don't mean fat as fat. Oh. The one you spoil the environment with gas. It gives, it gives you the edge to eat the watch. You meet the mice and the rat. They were eating pepper. And they asked them, why are you eating the pepper? It's not... The rat child came and said, oh, the way you are eating the pepper is nice. Can I eat some? So eat. There's child, this is a man. This thing is very bad. So you think is the, how sweet it is? It is wickedness abroad. <laughs> we just want to destroy the market. We want to destroy the pepper. That's why we are eating. It is not in the sweetness. It is what we want. Even with evil spirit, witches and wizards, they don't do things because of 
how, you say it's not good. Don't do that. It's not good. It's not the good or the bad they want to. It's a destruction. Stop talking about oh, it's not good. They know it's not good by their destruction. The end result is the reason why they are doing what they are doing. Say golden pipes. Bring golden oil. Oh, oh, I said, let's talk. Golden pipes. Release golden oil. Now ask someone, which vessel are you? So your vessel, tell me your vessel will determine how you interpret things. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Are we learning something here? So if you go to Romans chapter 8, 5 through 8, you realize that anybody who walks in the five senses becomes God's enemy. Whenever you try to interpret God's will by how you feel, how you see, I said my, the title of my message is what? Eh? Why God doesn't make sense? So I'm teaching you. I don't know if you're understanding God so far. He will never make sense to you. So Romans chapter 8, from verse 5. Are we there? Okay, let's go. For those who are dominated, no, give me the um, New King James. Make it easy. If you make it sinful nature, I pose, okay, because I'm sinning. Because it is not all flesh that is sinning. So I want it to become, okay, let's read. For those who live according to the are they there? What is the flesh? Your sight, your nose, your taste, your feeling. If you live according to the flesh, what will happen to you? Set their minds on the things of the... So, automatically, what you think about is the result of where you are now. So, wait a minute. I want to set... The Bible said, I'll set my watch. Don't go to the Habakkuk chapter 2. And see what the Lord will tell me. So God doesn't speak to you until you have set your timing. You think that you'll be there now? Then, oh, you take me to Habakkuk chapter 2. I'll stand upon my watch and I'll set my watch and see what the Lord will tell me. Take me there. Many people think that, oh, then God will speak. No, you, there's a way you must set yourself. There's a way you must tune yourself. You know you are coming to church Sunday. Why did you spend all the night chatting on phone so that you come and sleep in church? You didn't set yourself for church. Yeah. No, you don't worry. I will chill. Huh? When I go to church, at least that year after that, I will get the audio and I will listen. So you are here, you are sleeping. And the reason why you are sleeping is that you have not set yourself. Why should I say ducks? Maybe I mean who any. Maybe you should bring an electric chair so that when you are sleeping, somebody will press it so that your body will do this. I didn't mention anybody's name. Let's be our son, my watch, and set myself on the so you're setting yourself and what and what to see what he will say to me. So, how you set yourself is your positioning. Yes, I was going home. It's you I was talking to when I was going home. I called Josephine. And I couldn't hear well. So I asked her, position yourself. The line cut, the line cut, the line cut. Take your seat. Because how you set your... Sometimes when you are talking to somebody and the reception is not good, what do you tell the person? Jinaiye. Stand where? What does it mean? Is the person not standing? He's standing. But while the person is standing, is not allowing communication to go through. Look at the stand where? So a person who thinks a lot of flesh, and I'll prove to you what is flesh very soon. Let me give you an example of flesh. Because when I just make it simple, you don't understand. You are there and say, hey, then I'm there, no. Somebody will put two million dollars in my account. That is flesh. If I marry eh, my house, the way I'll treat it, that is flesh. How have you treated a single room? Oh God, cast 
customers, customers, customers. A customer called you 10 p.m. and said, Master, me, my dad. I sleep when I sleep, I don't work. Go to the next neighbor. And you wake up in the morning, God, it's only two I have. Can you make them ten? Oh, Lord, ten, Lord, ten, Lord, ten, Lord. You have not even said yourself. Because people who have a lot of customers, there's a way they have positioned themselves to embrace such people. I think I'm not teaching somebody well here. Is it a bad teaching? Yeah. The first time I met my sister, I've told you this story before. People went to talk. And I'm like this. I've not, I don't even know them. They only heard of me on radio. They spoke to me, Pastor. When we were doing the orientation, when I went, I went to sit at the back. Everybody spoke. I didn't say a word. They said, does anybody have anything to say? My hands were still down. The man looked at me at the back and said, Pastor Yali, do you have anything to say? I said, yes. What do you have to say? After I finished speaking, everybody who knew him before me, their plan were thrown away. Because you know what they did? When we came, we go and do crusade. We go and do this, we go and do this. And then they said, how do we put it? He said, they don't know. He should bring money. When he asked me, I said, we're going to do a crusade in Ebury. We'll do a pastor's conference in the morning. Where are we having in my church? Where are we in it in Ebury? How are we going? We have cars. My members have donated cars and we are going. So I don't need to pay anything. You don't need to pay anything. All you need to do is your availability and we are going. All the other people, before they knew, the man never came looking for them again because they never psychologically prepared. All they knew is that Bruniba. Bruniba, so I'm going to And since 2006, this man sends me money every month. I never asked for it. He has adopted me. I have inheritance in his kingdom. Somebody says we help you. Ready? Can I come out? Yeah, yeah. Now come out. Now come out. Now come out. Now come out. The person's heart is getting heart broken. You are praying too much. When the person says he will help you, it is not God who must touch his heart. You must touch the person's heart by a certain attitude. It is you, not God anymore. That prayer is a waste. One day, I'm sure when Pastor Charles is teaching, he will tell you this when I had a short meeting with him, I was telling him some few things. Because a lot of the times, we don't know why our opportunities close. You have to set yourself. So, back to Romans chapter 8, 5. He said, They that listen to their flesh have set their mind. Let's read again. Those who live according to what? Has set their minds on the things. Have set their mind. So let me give you an example. Should I should I give? I tell you that after church, go and talk to this young man. Say, take your seat. He said, Ah, the pastor. No, no, what just came into your mind? The flesh. You didn't look at the assignment. But wait a minute, it could be that if you go, he will think like that. But if you follow the reason why you went there, that will not be the reason why. That will not be what you receive. But you receive why you were sent. You didn't get what I just said. So wait a minute. God sends you to your lady. God sent you to a man to take care of your needs. Now the man says his interest is, say, God, if I don't agree, he will not take care of me again. You were a fool. Because before the man decided to help you, you have not given the man anything. And yet God had touched his heart. So it is not sleeping with the person that is going to make the person do it. Actually, the day you sleep, the door from heaven is closed. It is no more coming with a blessing. It is coming by the flesh. Now the person is also doing it because of what the person gets from you. Hey, I think you are not here. Mother, look at someone's here. Okay, give someone a high five. If the person's hand didn't go high, the person slept. High five. If we're in America, I say slap somebody. But I know if you hear, I say slap somebody. I know you slap. Somebody. But in America, I say slap somebody. Then you give somebody a high five. But here, if you say slap somebody, communication is different. 
So you understand me? So if I was in America, the communication would have been give somebody a slap. But I'm in Ghana. So like God said, I will now glorify you and the people that will benefit it. Said Tanda. So if I say, oh, give Pastor Tony a slap and he will bless you. You go. Pastor Tony. Man of God, I gave him a slap and he beat me. He said, I shouldn't come there again. Your prophecy didn't come to pass. Ah, well, how did you slap him? When I went, I looked at his face and I gave it to him wine, wine, wine. Just as you said, oh God. When I say a slap, it means give body a slap. Okay, next week Sunday, we all come here with pants. I stop the church. How can a pastor say we should come to church with paint? If we are in America, it means trousers. But you, you had Puto. So, a guy will tell the wife, stop that church. I was watching on YouTube. Your pastor said next week, everybody's coming with paint. You don't go there. It's not a bad church. I think I'm not preaching well. Did they hear me? I'm going to do ministration. So don't, everybody here, come here with paint. So that in case you fall, there will not be exposure. Now, I, I have a good intention. But your brain is so carnal. Some of you, if somebody says, tells you that, will you want to eat sausage? Your brain will go somewhere right now. I didn't say that, you know. Am I, am I speaking the truth? I just answer, sir. <laughs> Some of you, the pastor, what did you say? You are lost. You don't even understand what I'm talking about. Those who understand it are laughing. Those who don't understand it, God be with you. Oh, amen. So, back to Romans. They that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. So, you see, what you pursue determines your mindset. I cannot read your mind, but I can see what you chase, and I know your mind. But what you chase is your mind. I'll be sharing $100 every Sunday for the next five Sundays. Yeah, you'll be in church. Your mind is money. I'll be praying for people to become millionaires the next five Sundays. You will not be in church because I never mentioned money. So the truth is that I know your mind is not God. Your mind is money. And sometimes, even me, if I can, can read this mind, how much more Jehovah God? Your body language exposes who you truly are. You can spend five hours doing your hair, right? But you can't spend two minutes praying. Ah, you are not here. Oh, are you here? You go home. But those who live according to the spirit, what? The things of the spirit. And let's not forget, God is a spirit. God has no business with the flesh. So when God is speaking spiritual things and you are looting it to the flesh, you will not understand what God is saying. Now give me verse 7, verse 6, sorry. For the carnally minded is what? To be carnally minded what? But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. To be carnally minded is what? So we are living, but nothing is working because this brain is having a brain called dead. So anything God throws through does not enter. Because that brain is dead. You come to church. A lady holds your hand. You go and tell everybody that the lady is interested. Are you okay? A guy buys you a gift. One, two, three. Say, ah. I don't know. Where our mind, of course, it's also part of our culture. 
If you go to the Arab countries, they greet each other with a kiss. Africa, greet someone with a kiss. You will regret it. If today we are having a meeting and a male comes here and gives me a kiss, I know tomorrow morning I'll be on the front page gay. But Judas went to give Jesus a kiss. And Jesus said, My friend, you betray me with a kiss. It was normal. I think I'm not preaching well. Let your dress come home with stains of lipstick and see what the ladies will do to you. They don't even care. How did it happen? I mean, whether it is by mistake, the person was going to fall down and when the, the person was crying on your they don't care. What is, what, what is this thing happening there? Before you will speak, you are being sentenced. Guys, it's not true. I have this daughter. One day she intentionally put on a wicked lipstick. And she intentionally placed it on my hand. I washed this lipstick. It didn't go. Till I went to YouTube to find a formula for removing it. Now, if my wife was very ignorant, that could have been the end of my marriage. But this person was just joking. Some of us, we are so carnally minded. If you see somebody following up a soul at 12 o'clock, you have written it, male and female, evangelism, evangelism, and I imagine. I'm not preaching, no. Is it true? It's not true. You can say, this one, the pastor is talking about you. Verse 7. But a carnal mind is what? Enmity against God. It cannot be subject to the law of God, nor can it be. In other words, the senses that we have can never be used by God. And now get deeper. Uh, some people say, I, I feel like, what, find out what kind of feeling they feel. Is it Holy Ghost feeling or imagination feeling? Somebody can be frowning, angry with you for days because of a feeling. I'll go, I'll go deeper. Very soon. Because of a vision. Because of a dream. I remember I had a dream. In a dream, one of my pastors had rebelled, the SEC pastor. And I was taken over the church. When I woke up in the morning, I called him and said, Come, I hand over the SEC church to you. Whatever you want to do, you do it. And Pastor, but you had a dream. I want you to tell the dream that get out of my mind. It's a lot of the time we enforce evil dreams we have because our mind is so carnal. You are not here, you go home. Me so die. So you had a dream you were dead, you are still alive. Why don't you die? And I want to go deeper because a lot of us are being controlled by our senses, and we say it's God. To be saints. Minded is and anybody who prays by the sense is God's enemy. Nothing good for well, let me say God does not make sense. I can give you a lot of things in the Bible. God doesn't make anything God is telling you doesn't make sense to the sense. How can you start a building like this? And all the money you have, go and use it to pay church members school fees, and the rest go and pay tight. I'm going to a seat and you come and cast sword. When you've been cutting sword, no pastor from anywhere came to support you. I was telling somebody that I'm a pastor who gives a lot of pastors. When this building happened, no pastor has come. I think only one pastor had come and said that I'm giving you one bag of cement.
And when you see things like that, you know that this pastor is not following his service. We are owing about 100,000 Ghana cities. We've not finished paying it for the iron rods. And I say, I'm going to buy chairs. And sometimes I can't people will look at me and say, are you okay? We don't even know how we pay for the hand, iron rods and you are buying chairs. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make economic sense. Or it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Very, I've been telling that no why one day they have to start bringing an um, account report for you to see. I was talking to a church, Pastor David and the mom was there. And they said, and they are offering Sunday something 150 Ghana cities, 200 and something Ghana cities. They are not like our own. Pastor David was there. Then, then I removed our church offering this report. I said, Mommy, Pastor David's mother, I said, look at our own. We took get 120. 250. Then, like, then why are you able to build what we are building? It doesn't make economic sense. <laughs> Most of our churches, they do Kofi and Nama, they do harvest, and they invite Asimesi, chairman, supporter, all those things. But they are not building what we are building. Why? Because if you move by what you see, what you feel, what you taste, what you sense, you are moving out of God's will and very soon you be God's enemy. I've seen people, eh? I remember when there's a case that came in Ghana. Prophets gathered, went to Atria Mountain, fasted and prayed. And they came. That time we are not even finished that building there. Came to sit down with me. I thought they had something good to tell me. That's yes, the Lord. You are going to jail if you follow this man. Hey. Not one prophet, oh. Company of prophets. Then this church that also rebelled and left us. They began to preach this in their church that they have seen the vision. I'm in jail. Well, I'm still here. The person they say will go to jail is still there. What happened to their vision? You see, people see according to their imagination. Read Psalm 2. Why do you imagine a vain thing? He that sits in the heaven shall laugh. A man of the spirit always laughs and scorns at the plots of the enemy. Listen to me. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The fact that I see the weapon, that doesn't mean it will work. You didn't get that one. Seeing a weapon is one thing. Making it work is another. Sometimes we see the weapon and we make it work. I don't even clap. So, man, if God shows you that somebody around you is a witch, what do you do? Come on. I know what to do to set people free from witchcraft. I'll put to met, met systems that to make sure that their witchcraft in you doesn't operate. Let me tell you one rule of life. It's not in the Bible. But it's in a book called The Art of War. You, some of you don't read wide. The Art of War. It says, keep your friends close. But keep your enemies closer. Judas was very close to Jesus. He was the one that was keeping the money. If you see Judas keeping the money and Jesus knowing that he will be the one who betrayed, it means that Jesus kept, any time Jesus needs money, the first person he has to call is Judas. You can't keep your enemies close, even to keep them closer. So when they are plotting, you never know. When they are closer, the day they are not around, you know they are working. You didn't hear that one. <laughs> you don't have the inner tenacity to keep certain people around you. You don't even know the difference between somebody who is bitter. And so it's an enemy because of bitterness. So if you take away the bitterness, the person becomes a friend. Am I teaching well? I sense some good presence of God on me. And some of you have thrown away protection.
potential people who were next in line for God to use them to take your next level because you operated by your senses. I told somebody that a man of God will die. It was on Friday. Saturday night, the popular man died. The following week, we were having a meeting in my office. And I saw myself. I told that person that I saw you sitting in a dark room. Everybody had deserted you. No man of God was by you. I saw myself implementing that dream. When I told this person, leave my office, walk out, I don't want to see you again. I am implementing the thing. The very thing I saw happen to the person. I am the person who is implementing. It took me a lot of humility to lay down my pride. When he also came down, I said, let's sit down and settle it. If it is true, what can come, can come. I've said it because I even had a dream about it. Once I've dreamt it, it must come to pass. Hey, do you know how? So God gives your, your, your partner, married partner, a business potential. And you have a dream that the business partner and this, your marriage partner, they are cheating. So the business must not go on. There's something crazy with you, not me. I think that God has opened a door. But there are many adversaries. So, partner, how do we deal with this adversary? We need a door. I saw potential danger, but I also see it as an opportunity. So, how do we deal with the potential danger and still have the opportunity? If we sit down and we maximize it and we can have both working, then you choose the better option. Don't go. But if there's a potential of an escape and yet a breakthrough, ha, surely they shall gather, but not by me. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. God doesn't make sense because we try to do everything by sense and we close our doors. If you are not happy, let me close. You know, now I develop a new strategy. I close for those who want to go home and those who want to control with me. I do ministration. The last two feasts of miracles saw me do that. It's a new strategy. You go home and I continue with those who want to enjoy me. So read the next eight. So they that are in the sense level, the flesh cannot please God. They cannot do what? They cannot do what? What does it mean to please God? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And faith is the opposite of your senses. I've taught it before. I said faith. The opposite of faith is not the, it's not a event, it's a fear. It is sight, senses, feelings, emotions. Oh, amen. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 18. When I say some of this, some of you are oh, let me give you scriptures to buttress it because. Anything I say, I need a scripture to buttress it. Colossians 2.18. One of the things to be careful about is what I call vain visions, advice, and counsel from the senses. When people are advising you, they're giving you counsel. They have said they had a vision. They have had a dream. Check if it is coming from the sense level. Or the spirit level. Let's read. Let no one what? Cheat you. Other version will say, let no one defraud you. It is fraud. You know what is fraud? 419. So let's read this one. Let no one what? Cheat you of your rewards. Take, taking delight in what? false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen very puffed up by his fleshly mind. Let me give you a very good example. Give me the NLT for the... Oh, okay, let's read the message. Read, read. Don't read. Go. Don't tolerate people who try to run your life. Listen, no. Ordering you to bow and scrape 
insisting that you join the obsession with angels and that you seek out visions. There are a lot of hot air. That's all they are. I have a daughter very close to me. And this daughter is dating a guy. And I've never felt comfortable with it. But even though I've never felt comfortable with it and I've been praying about it, I've never told her not to walk with this person. I don't know how to do that. So one day I called her in, in Pastor Tony's office. And I called Pastor David. And I said, for the first time, I want to tell this my daughter to move away. And I don't know why. But I want you people to ascertain. Then they said, ah. Pastor Tony said, I've also told her. Then Pastor David said, I've also done it several times. That was when I became very convinced that my decision was right. Why? Are you not a man of God? I'm a man of God. But sometimes you can allow emotions to make you help. Oh, I don't think you're understanding me. You can easily allow your emotions to cloud your thinking for the person. So sometimes I feel like we don't live by feeling so. I sense in my spirit. Which of your spirit? Is it your mind that you call your spirit? Those days, before I proposed to my wife, I asked her then, then Pastor David and were not even pastors. They put around, I've been praying about this lady. And I said, she's now, what do you all think about it? And also, oh yeah, we've seen that is good. We can go ahead. These days, they were just sense. <laughs> I feel that you are the one. When even I sleep, I dream about you. My dreams even say it. Prophets are saying it. You don't read your Bible, eh? You are not here. Those days, if you really want to marry, you go and talk to your father and your mother. And then they will be the one to find out for you because love is blind. If you choose any partner on your own, you are blinded. You didn't hear me. If, if you see well, <laughs> find out from those. What do you think? Can you help me in prayer? Listen, if you have been, you, you are in love with somebody, you think about the person, ah, you take this sleep, you can't dream you're having a wedding. And yeah, I drink tea. And my Joseph so die. It was Joseph was thinking and pondering over the issue of marriage, whether to divorce or not. Then he had a dream. Peter was thinking about the food that was more coming. Then he saw the heavens open three times. Say, skill and eat. It was food. Thinking, thinking can lead to dream, dream. At Ecclesiastes chapter three, that a dream comes to much activities. Much activities causes you to dream. Why you doing power? When my wife was taking seat, if I tell you the people had dreams, the baby was not born. My wife died. I was lonely. I was looking for a wife. <laughs> so I got to a stage, I told all of them, if you dream, pray. Because you know what? They can, look, I'm not talking about five six people, about 20, 30 people. So one day I went to God and said, God, what is this? He said, you want me to handle it? I said, yes, Lord. He said, continue with your Levite meeting. I said, Lord, I'm leaving here at home alone. He said, I will take care, care of the situation. So every night, evening, I was at Levite meeting doing training. And that meeting is what bring the church, brought the church growth we, want, we expected. And people were giving me dreams to distract me from it. And let me tell you this. Anytime you see people say they have dreams and vision about you, and they are insisting and pushing, the people are kind of, it's a demon that is pushing them. Let me tell you this. If you dream and you tell somebody, take it to prayer, you are not the monitor. Look, let me tell you this. Let me say this. Somebody told me this. You, are, you say you are, I don't want to say this. You say you are a woman. I don't have a problem. You had a vision. God has told you that we should stop doing church service here. Why are people will fall down and die? 
I said, you have heard. Now you keep telling me, when are you going to make us go down? I said, get it behind me. You see, most often, a lot of these things, they come to inform you to bring you fear. And when you entertain the fear, then the spirit starts working. I'll deal with that as we go on. Because fear is one of the factors that doesn't make God sensible to us. Read. Okay, Exodus 5, three. read. For a dream comes through much activity. But a fool's voice is no matter what. Many words. Your action should do the talking. I think I'm not preaching well. Okay, give somebody a slap. Let me see if you are born again. I hope you slap well. Okay. I, I had a dream. I was walking and somebody took my phone. Like last year, telling me. Then, because of that, you, you put, you don't use your phone because somebody will steal. Ah, what is this? Why are you not using your phone? The phone is expensive. I've packed it. I don't want anybody even to call me. The phone will get missing. Why? I've had dreams three times that someone has stolen my phone. Are you crazy? Did you know whether the dream was giving you precaution? Was warning you? Was making sure you know how to live your life? To be very, very protective about that thing. Because that's the end result of what God wants for you. is prosperity. So if the thing is going to stop you from prospering, then God will not allow it. So read the Colossians 2, 8 again for me, please. Go. The NLT will do for me now. Oh. Read. Don't let anybody what? By what? Insisting on what? Pious what? Or saying that they have heard about these things. Their sinful minds have made them proud. One day when we were building the old church building, I was asleep. And I had a dream that the part of the building has fallen down from my, the first step to the my office area. All of them came down. Brah. So, when I came, I was like, how is the building going? They were talking to me. I didn't tell them the dream. I stationed myself there and when they were constructed, I saw that that place was coming down. So I quickly called them. It's going down. Why? I had a vision to help me stop an incident. But not to stop the project. So if you look at that building from that place, that place sucked in a pit. And before the thing, I was telling the contractor, do it this way. We need to, he was telling me, it won't come down, man of God, you don't even know. It is my field. I knew he was talking from a sense of knowledge. I came to him and said, listen, we can't use two by, you were there, two by six. Let us use bamboo. He said, man of God. You see, we are, that's why you have employed us. We will do the work for you. I am talking from a spiritual point of view. He was giving me his mental kind of view. Have you seen the roof of that building? So that it's caved in. The same thing happened. I said, the carpenter, if you remove this, it will come down. I know what I'm talking about. He said, man of God, it is my field. And I'm the kind of person, as for David Sonny, when I come to you and I begin to ask you questions about a certain area, I might not tell the full detail. That's the place to start waking up. I remember they came to steal a water pump. I went to Pastor David. I said, Pastor David, this water pump protects it too, so that it will be done. And I went again. Oh, Pastor, Daddy, leave it for me. I know what I'm doing. It will be done. I didn't talk about it again. The next month, it was stolen. That night, it was stolen. I felt something funny. But I couldn't say anything. Because my associate says it is taken care of. But let me tell you something here. You know why? Because sometimes when you see the negative in a dream, 
One that things, you see, the Bible says, no weapon fashion against you shall prosper. And every tongue, you see, it is one thing for the weapon to be functioned. It's one thing for the tongue to speak it. So say, when the tongue speaks it, you must refuse it. That doesn't mean it is not true. But the day you accept it, the process begins. Am I teaching you practically here? Is it practical enough? Yeah. If you are not happy with me, you can go. So some people tell me that I am stubborn. Not that I'm stubborn, no. If you knew what I know, and you know the confidence I have with my God, you won't tell me what you don't know. Johnny just come. I remember when one day I was asleep. Pastor Tony is here. When we're now I was fast asleep. Pastor Tony called me. Pastor Tony picked the phone. Pastor Tony said, Daddy, trouble. I said, I will lose in our church building. I said, How did you know? I was dreaming about it when we were marking the place. I said, Don't worry. Because I saw in the vision that we have bought a place and we're building six months. As of the time I was saying this, we were very frank. We don't even have land, we don't have anything. And when I came, I saw it to be demolished. The reason they did for demolition there. Where are we going as a church? I went to tell a friend. Nobody told me. Oh, wait here. If it becomes critical, come and join us. I can make you associate pastor. Hagar will always tell Abraham what to do to delay the coming of Isaac. Canal advice. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel, the advice of the ungodly, nor standard in the way. When you listen to canal advice, you are not blessed. You are operating under a curse. There's a married couple. They are here. They decided to go their ways. And the lady came to me. And I called both of them to my office. And the guy was stubborn. Bra, for three, four months, he was not here. I was talking to the lady. And I told her, Mommy is talking to you, right? He said, yes. I said, close your eyes and hand it over to me. I'm in charge. Sleep. Yesterday, they called me. They had a wonderful date. I called them. I called the lady. She came to my office. I said, while she was there, I was sitting at the top there. I called the husband. I said, listen, you have to come and meet me on Monday. Your love has resurrected, but you've not gone on a date. Go on a date with your wife and enjoy yourself and call me. Now they called me and said, the lady was shy. I mean, then the lady said to me, said, daddy, not that I was shy. He said, been a while. You are laughing. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> but it takes a love on for you to hear that when things are going off, every sign means it's going off. And the man of God is saying, go and sleep. It's in my hands. And you don't see the man of God doing anything. I'll never call this man. I'll never call her. I'll never call anybody. And you're wondering, is he really working? You think working is calling people? Everybody, everybody, yes way, yes way, na na you way, you this way. Listen, everybody is a spirit being. And the best way to talk to people for them to listen is communicate to their spirit. If you appeal to people's emotions, the emotions will fade. Feelings will go away. But your spirit will always remain. A lot of things are not consistent, but it is more of emotions. Nostalgia. If I tell you, tell me and I close because I've not even started. Oh, amen. Colossians, no. Titus 1, 15 and 16. The level of your purity affects how you understand God. The level of your purity understand how you understand God. The level of your purity.
we're doing construction. A pastor comes here, meets Pastor Tony, sits in his car and asks the people outside, can I have some of the sand from the church in the back? And Pastor Tony says, no. Thank God that day, it was Pastor Tony they met. If they have met any of the workers, they will think it is ordinary sand. They will carry it. And I won't tell you the effect of that thing on a church. Interesting, that day in question, I was there and I came to tell Pastor Tony about it. I don't like you people being here. Move. Join the workers. Why are you here? Move it. I was angry. I didn't even know why. Why are you here? You are not supposed to be in the office. You are supposed to be on the compound. Happy they put to work. I was talking and I was angry. You are, I know you have to be in the room to do computer and make sure you send messages. I don't like it. Move and join them at the place. He got there and the pastor says, can I taste all the sun? He was there. He said no. Know what that no has done to us? It has saved us. Why she put interpretes anger, laughter, emotions a different way from how other people interpret it? What I read some two, let's read the some two again. He said, Why did the people rage? Why did the people imagine the vain things? Why did they plot against God's people? He that sits in the heaven shall laugh. How can God, you see people fighting your people and you are laughing? You think that God is laughing because he doesn't want you to succeed. If you understand why God is laughing, you would think that God, so I had a dream. You were being destroyed and God was laughing. God was laughing. So God is happy I'm being destroyed. You don't understand it. It's not me that God was laughing at. God was laughing at my enemies. That this thing you are doing, it will not harm me. It will not get to anywhere. But you will see it and think that it means there's Wahala coming. God is angry. He that sits in the heaven shall what? Laugh. The Lord will hold them in derision. If your lights go off in your area, your house, you call it CG straight away. You check if your neighbors have light. You check if you don't have prepaid. When you know that your neighbors, everybody has light, you check your prepaid, then you know that their fault is within. When you check your heart and there's no trouble with you and God, forget what the enemy is plotting. Focus on your God. The assignment of the enemy is to make you lose focus and concentrate on other things that are trivia and will only come to derail and delay you. Titus 1, 15 and 16. Let's read NLT, please. Everything is pure to to those whose hearts are pure. Let me tell you this. If somebody's heart is pure, eh, they come and tell him that somebody is plotting to kill him. The person laughs. Because you know, in his heart, he's not plotting to kill anybody. Even with the evil report, he sees good out of it. But when your heart is evil, when you hear evil report, you know that evil is coming. Let's read it again. To the pure Go. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure to those who are what? Corrupt and only because their minds and conscience are their minds and conscience are and because your mind and conscience is already corrupted, even when pure things are being released to you, it is not pure. Some people, they put it at the back of their head. Pastor, if you go to the top and you come down, if I want to marry, I will sleep with the person. If I don't sleep, I will never marry. No matter what, I will do it. No problem. That is the level of your purity. The next one, 16. Such people claim, read, I don't want to read, so I'm sorry to go. They know God, but they deny him by the way they live. 
They are distrustful and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. Am I preaching here? Read again. Read again. Maybe you forgot. Read again. Go. They deny him by the way they live. And in the spiritual realm, they are, they are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. So you realize that when good things come to them, what? They detest it. They are disobedient to it. They see it as worthless. Why? Because their system can't embrace it. Joseph, you are house boy. Madame says, do it one. Only one. One. If you do only one, your, your stay in Egypt will be permanent. Joseph told himself, I know where God is taking me. I must be a prime minister. You, madame, you even, is Asamutia. Is this situation that has made me lace your shoe? If not you, you can never even come near me. But it's a matter. Many have reduced their destiny to their current destination by their hobby. I want to take it like that. Then you are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. Am I in power? Is it bridge ministries? Look at somebody say, can I give you a slap? Okay, give somebody a slap. Hey, please. Sir. I see some are still slapping face. <laughs> oh, amen. amen. So you wonder how you walk with this person. When the person was about to break through, not you and the person were no more talking. As soon as you left the person, the person is succeeding. Now you can't have access to the person again. It's your mindset. Can I move on? So Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says that faith, you see, faith is never a mindset. Faith is a spiritual realm. Faith must come before the senses. Faith must come before what? Faith must come what? And faith is the substance of things, the evidence of things, and yet believe. In other words, what does it mean that you have not seen it and yet you believe? Belief is a kind of sight. An engineer came here. I think you've had about four or five. And Kuma is here, he will tell you. Then he came. He walked around. The guy ran to me. He and his boy. Giddy, giddy, giddy. I said, what is it? He said, man of God, I don't want you to be in trouble. Very soon you'll be disgraced. Yeah, it is good I came. I said, what is it? He said, man of God, you see this place from this place, there's no pillar. Very soon it will come down the people, they will die. I said, okay. I said, do you know 30, what does is, what is the MM we use there? 33 or 32 mm. He said, it's very expensive. I said, we use 32 mm. Pori pori 33. Just for this place. He said, ah, man of God, God bless you. I'm going. You see, because he didn't know what went into the project, he was exhibiting his fear. Now, if I also didn't know what had gone into this project, I would call my engineers and say, let me, let me go. Most often, people don't know the inner tenacity, the kind of things you are built in your system when they are projecting fear to you. When you have not built anything in your system, that's when you begin to be afraid. I remember when we were doing an old church building. The other one, the youth center. I pray the Lord said, use the faster floors, fast floors. All the people say, this thing, it will come now. It will do this. It will come now. I said, it won't. We've used it. It's been 10 years. They gave me two years. And the one, one engineer told me, man, well, you don't know. 
you, when I came to your church at Awashi, people do all things are possible in a jump. And you can do ministration and somebody will fly in the air and will land down, bra, all this thing. You see, he's giving me his evidence based on what he knows physically. But he has not seen my evidence. If you don't know, I'll put you know, 32 mm. 32 mm is like my thumb here, my wrist here. Body, body 33. You are not an engineer, so you won't appreciate it. We are even hanging speakers. Do you know the weight of the speakers? And when you tell them what has gone into it, then they keep quiet. Later, one asks me, So, who is your engineer? That's something about faith, also. I said, Do you ask the guy, do you know Takwa Stadium currently? He said, Yeah, I've been there. The work is going on. I said, The one who did it is our offense, my friends. A structure engineer I said, Hey, I said, Do you know Circle Dubai? The Dubai circle you've been passing on the bridge, the same guy that's oh, then you are done. If it is him, you are done. The truth is that you see, the truth is that what the guy is telling me that if you yell a pastor, you tell me this thing will not come now, I won't believe you. But if you tell me that the engineer is saying it there, I'll believe you. When somebody says faith, if me yell it, I'm telling you it's not going to work, and God says it's going to work, God's word is bigger than my word. No. I don't get it when God is speaking to you. And you are allowing ordinary people to also tell you things, including dreams and visions. I would say that faith is not based on who said, hey, what is said, but also who said it. Is it true or is it not true? When they say that is the engineer, I say, ah, then I can't go and sleep. But me, you are a pastor. Look at someone say, Do you have faith? Faith developed around the senses realms comes when, with unseen mistakes. When you work your faith on things you see, you feel, it comes with mistakes and errors. Ishmael was one of them. Do you know one song we sing? You are my hiding place. What key are we? You are you. Give me a key. Let's go. Give me a neck. Mm -hmm. hey, I can't go. He played for me. Ah, see how she's sleeping. Ah. Where are my hiding place? You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Wait. When God came to Joshua. You know what he told him? He said, he said, do not be afraid. Be strong and be that courageous. Anytime you are really afraid, it's the enemy who is trying to push you away from an assignment. Whenever I am afraid, I'll do what? Oh, help me. I will what? Trust in you. Whenever you are afraid, you do what? When you are afraid, you do what? In not trust in man. Let's go on. Whenever God speaks to you and you ask, where does this come from? 
or it takes you a long time to absorb it, it's a sign that you never develop yourself for what God said. Let me explain. When I was coming to church, where is Patia? I met her, the first person I spoke to, I said, you marry a pastor. Ah, I refuse it! I don't want it! I don't know. She refused it. She has refused a proposal coming this week. You know why? Because I don't like it. But the truth is that I know a lot of people who swore they will never marry a pastor. That today they are married to pastor. Kaya is one. Even Pastor David said he will be a Pope celibacy. They will never marry. Pastor Vic taught them so. They will not marry. As for them, God has called them. Charismatic, the first charismatic Pope. That was their vision. I don't know what happened to that vision. You will be a man of God to fear quite God. Anything but a man of God. You know why you are rejecting it? You will never know what God has for you. And I said, why don't you want? I, I suffer from I, pastors. They go through a lot. Somebody look at me and say, I'll never marry a pastor. Why? You don't spend time at home. That's what I so I don't want to marry a pastor. The way you are always in church, I don't want to marry a pastor. So you see the person. Why is the person refusing marrying a pastor? Is it God or sense? Sense. A lot of the times we reject a certain opportunity based on certain experiences of people. Not because God is speaking, but we are allowing the senses to dictate to us. Hey, you are not here. Some of you, if anybody had told you that we sit under preaching for one hour, you said to a fear, oh, this church church people, we are not that agree, oh, church church people, today look at you. Why are you not going home? I had the struggle to bring you to church in the beginning. I heard it wasn't easy. You came and you left. You came and you left. Oh? You were in another church. But now, Nobody chases you. Is it true? You are here. But when I tell you, oh, this place is good, you are like, ah, I have my church. Ah, I have my church. The truth is this. A lot of times, we resist what we don't know. And you, you tell yourself that if I had known this, I should have been here early. But how many years did it take you to settle down? Two or three years. But now you look at back and say, I said, so a lot of the times, we don't hear from God. We use sentiments, emotions, my former girlfriend is there, so I don't go there. Hey, Pastor Dave, you are insulting them. Can we go on? This one, I'm sure you know it. The best way to revenge is to you didn't have my message yesterday I repeat it the best revenge is to the best revenge is to what when people feel you can't make it add value to you that's all keep adding now let me wake up every day telling yourself that this is what I picked up yesterday because it's the inner capacity you build that will always determine how fast you go. Thomas said, what did Thomas say to Jesus? Lord, if my hand, this my hand, doesn't touch your wound and my finger go to your side, you are not God. And what did Jesus tell him? Blessed is he that believe has not seen and yet believe. Most often, if you have to see it before you believe it, you are not saved. 
And those who are looking for Friday training, what did I say? Sign Mark 16, 17. This signs shall follow them that believe. So your breakthrough will do what? Oh, I don't hear you. They will what? Oh, you are not here. They will do what? Oh, you forgot it. These signs will follow them that. Are you, that do what? Okay, wait. Wait, let me ask you a question. Who was not here on Friday? Okay, let me use you as an example. Come. Come. Do you want to build a house? Do you want to build a house? I started. Do you believe God will give you a house? Do you believe you can build a house? You don't. The Bible said, signs will follow them that believe. If you believe, you take the step. When you take the step, the blocks follow. The cement follow. The things you need follow. The things you need will not follow you until you take a step. The step you take is the sign that you believe. And what is the sign you believe? You have built the inner capacity that is called faith that the world doesn't see but you know, but they don't know. Why is it that there are no pillars in the middle, man of God? Because I told the structure engineer that I don't want a pillar. He said, that will cost you. I said, good. He said, you pay twice if you don't want pillars in the middle. I said, there. He said, it's iron rods. I said, no problem. So I spent more because of what I wanted. I don't want anyone to ask me. Oh, are you getting what I'm saying? So, a lot of us say, we believe, but have you taken the step? So, God, things are not working for me. Nothing is pulling on. Lord, if things will work, I will move. If things will go on, I will move. God is also saying, no. If you believe it, move. And the evidence will work. Come on, give the Lord a magic clap for free. <laughs> Quickly, let's go through this. The woman with the issue of blood told herself several times if I touch if I touch I shall be made whole. she built it inside her faith is felt first built inside she told herself I'm making it she told herself I'll get healed she told herself I'm getting better if I go to church today there to be my day you, you told yourself today I will sleep if the pastor make a mistake in one hour, I'll get out. I say, I'm going to be with you. Oh, I go. And so far, you are about to execute it. What have you been saying to yourself when nobody is there? What have you been saying to yourself? You meet my house people, eh? They are bad, oh. hmm. So why is that things don't work for me? Why is that I always have to try ten times before I succeed? It is what you have been thinking about. So your mind is not pure. It is full of iniquity. Ephesians 4, 17 to 19. I'll continue on Wednesday. You see, today you are tired. You didn't say, flow. You didn't say, all night. Ephesians 4, 17 through 19. Are we there? This I say, therefore. Now give me NLT. When God doesn't make sense. Read, go. With the Lord's authority, I say this. Live no longer as... Now, what is the difference? The Gentiles... Go ahead and do things because you have packaged everything ready. But a spirit man builds everything mentally. You build everything hot. You are mentally. You adjust your senses to what you want to do. So that your senses doesn't deny you access to your faith.
So with the Lord's authority, I say this, live long, longer as what Gentiles do. For they are what? Hopelessly confused. They are not confused, but they are what? Hopelessly confused. 18. Their minds are full of... Oh, please read with me. Go. Am I talking to educated people? Read. Go. Uh Uh-huh. Because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. 19. They have no signs of shame. They live for and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. God saw darkness. What did he say? Let there be. If it is you go for a board meeting to discuss darkness. Why are we having darkness? Give me 14 reasons why we are having darkness. And we will all sit down and drink tea. Take per diem. And discuss darkness. The African mentality. We discuss problems. God came down. He said, I see darkness. My eyes, my senses say this is darkness. But my spirit said, let there be light. He spoke his, what he wanted, not what he saw, not what he felt. He spoke what he wanted. You are speaking your fear. And fear will develop into dreams and visions. And fear will attract certain kinds of people to you. And I'll continue on Wednesday and I'll deal with it. Am I talking to somebody here at all? How many of you have been afraid before? If you have not been afraid before, please, I need prayers from you. How many of you have been afraid before? Hey, me too, I feel. I fear, Papa. I have been afraid before that what if we don't finish this building? I have been afraid before when we started a foundation and saw the water coming. I said, hey, God. I have been afraid before when they brought the bills. 240,000 iron rolls. I said, God. But I realized that as you keep conquering, the fear diminishes. As you keep moving forward, the fear doesn't look like it exists. But you see, when you are talking to me, and I'll tell you, we are going to get this thing done. Say, this man is a man of faith. Oh, I don't know. I wish you did my inside. And you know how I'm afraid. How I'm afraid that this thing will not work. Eh? I'm afraid. Sometimes I'll be there and the devil say, oh, okay, you see it. You come to church this morning. Nobody will be in church. You will see. Feast of miracle. That's why you told me nobody will come. As I was standing here, I said, cry empty. Hey, nobody's here. Before I closed my eyes and open, I said, Kai, where did they come from? Then all of a sudden, prayer warriors, let's pray. Any spirit, any spirit, that doesn't want them to come. You are not leading prayer out. You are speaking fear. What the devil told you has given you a prayer topic. You began to be afraid, so you are calling prayer warriors. Let us pray that people will come. You are lying. You are exhibiting your fear. When the enemy tells you you can't finish, shout to grace, I will finish. I didn't hear, say, I will finish. finish. One of the things you never know, do. Women know how to do it very well. Ladies, if it's not to tell me. A lady can be very, very, very interested in a guy, but will never tell the guy. But the guy must know and say it. Is it true or is it not true? Don't speak your fear. Don't let the other side see what you are afraid of. Control that fear and speak the opposite. (laughs) 
You don't have money to go to church. Say, today I'm heading to church. I don't know how it's happening. Today is the day my miracle is waiting for me in church. I'm heading to church. Someone asks, are you going? I'm going. How? I know I'm going. I don't know how, but I know I'm going. Like if you ask me, would we finish this building? We will finish. Would the roof come on tiles? Abba. Every two, it will be the first class building in the whole Ghana. The pastor, at this rate, you are yobbing and you are blasting. If you don't know what I've been through, the Lord told me something. Friday, I didn't say it. One of my daughters had a dream and came to tell me. And I laughed. I said, send it to me by audio. She told me yesterday night. Whilst choristers were doing their practice, I said, send it to me by audio. When I listened to the audio, I said, Kai, this is very true. Because it was almost the same thing Friday God spoke to me about the Gentiles, the strangers coming to take over. And when we are building things in the spirit, don't let the physical frustrate you. Look at something, I'm not afraid. I didn't hear you. And I told you that when a thief comes to your house and you are afraid, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Your shout to make the enemy think you are very bold and run away. But the truth is that the one who is really afraid is you. My shout has a way of diminishing the courage of your opposition. Lift your voice and begin to talk to God.